here's God, and here he's speaking of himself in plural and singular pronouns. Everything now is upside down. I had this warm feeling come over my body from head to toe. The, the synagogue was a, a big part of our life. My father, over the years, was president of the synagogue. We observed uh, all the holidays. We were always looking back on what God had done in the past. And I, I was began to ask myself, what is God doing now? Why are we always looking back? In my early 20s, I drifted away from the synagogue. I was looking for meaning and purpose in my life. I started searching down different avenues, Eastern religions, transcendental meditation, after I had exhausted all avenues, I sold everything and went to a maritime school and started shipping out on merchant ships for 11 years. Um, I spent a lot of time in the Far East and in Eastern Europe and, and South and Central America. And wherever I went, I would go to a synagogue and then a house of worship for that uh, particular culture. But I always took with me my uh, Torah and Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures, and rabbinic literature. I was studying the Bible one evening, and I came to Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Let us create man in our image. In our image, let us create man, male and female. And I'm thinking to myself, how can God be us and him at the same time? And when I spoke to my rabbi, the answers that he gave me just didn't, uh, didn't uh, resonate with me. As I was continuing to study, I noticed the personal relationship that God had with our fathers, with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Moses and Joshua. God spoke with them and they made sacrifice and made altars. And I didn't have that relationship with God. At the synagogue, no one had that personal relationship. So I began to pray, God, I want to know you like our fathers. As I continued my study through the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Writings, a resume of the Messiah began to develop. What family he would be born into, what lineage, when he would come. It built a very strong case for, for uh, Yeshua. Jesus, the Messiah. So um, uh, by then I began to pray, God, if, if Yeshua is the Jewish Messiah and Savior of the world, please reveal this to me. One evening as I was driving from Sarasota to Panama City, I saw four crosses along the side of the road over the course of the trip. And when I looked at them, this overwhelming sense of joy and peace came over my body from head to toe. From that moment on, I began to think of Jesus. His name would just appear in my mind and I would have this overwhelming feeling of joy and peace and contentment. One day I was reading a book and I'd fallen asleep and all of a sudden in my mind's eye, I heard Yeshua Adonai, Yeshua my Lord, and I woke up, and what was that? When I had shared with my family that I had received Yeshua as my Messiah, there was a lot of rejection. Uh, and they said, how could you do this? And don't you know what Christians have done to our people over the years? And thought I had joined a cult. Years later, they've seen the, the positive change in my life. And, and now Maxie and I are, uh, for the most part, assimilated back into our families. We're being invited to weddings and bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs, and uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing. Sometimes it's not easy to be a Jewish follower of Yeshua. So I would encourage, uh, everyone to pray for the Jewish people, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, and to pray for the salvation of Israel.